uh, from the great city of Bilbao, the international uh, delegate and speaker of for Podemos, Eduardo Mara. Eduardo. Good afternoon. Okay. So good afternoon and thanks for for the invite. Um, what I'd like to do today, or my main goal, is just to share an experience, the experience of um, the work in progress. Podemos is. Uh, we are. Um, just one year and a half old, so you know this is this is going on uh, right now, and and many of the things I will tell you about are are open, are not are not part of the of the past. So in January 2014, when we launched uh, Podemos, um, we had an idea, and the idea was very simple, actually. There is um, a new political space in Spain, but this political space is not um, on the left side of the political board, and uh, nor it is in, on the right side of the political board. It's at the heart of Spanish politics. The turning point was um, a little bit before, three years before, January 2014. It was uh, May 2011 with the uh, May 15th uh, movement, uh, also known as the Indignados uh, movement, taking place in the squares of several Spanish cities. Um, there are connections between um, the Indignados and Podemos, but the first thing to say, and to make clear is that Podemos is not the party of the Indignados. There are things you can't possibly represent as a party, and this has been this way, and we think it must remain this way. So there are connections, there are a million connections, but uh, we are not the party of, of those movements. Whatever changed in May 2011 is impossible to summarize in three, four minutes, but I will outline three major shifts that took place in, in 2011. Firstly, the traditional two-party system, and, you know, Labour, Conservative, but also the left-wing, the traditional left-wing party, United Left, Izquierda Unida in, in Spain, this traditional party system, uh, so two party and a half, let's say, um, fell into disrepute fell into disrepute. Um, along with these three parties, so basically the Labour uh, Party and Conservative Party, uh, along with these um, two parties, also the metaphors of the left and the right kind of uh, fell into, into disrepute. This uh, doesn't mean that people didn't vote Labour or Conservative uh, anymore. It, it means that the confidence in those parties was broken. Was broken. But the Conservative Party won the general election in 2011. Second thing, little by little, what was perceived as something uh, individual, let's say uh, unemployment, the risk of unemployment, uh, the risk of eviction, and many other social problems that families have in, a, in the middle of an economic crisis like the one in, in Spain, um, all those things weren't perceived uh, as individual problems or family problems um, anymore. They were, um, you know, they became something, uh, something common, something generational, something uh, different than an, an individual problem. Therefore, those problems became political problems. This is the second thing that changed in, in May 2011. And the third thing is that you know, when you speak about indignation, it's easy to regard indignation as something moral, but not nothing political in itself. Um, this is not true. Indignation in Spain, because it um, had become something political, 
was uh, something uh, different. It was, it was not uh, the moral indignation one uh, experiences when uh, something unfair is uh, on TV. It's not that kind of thing. It's not like watching uh, television and, and, and having to face a different uh, situation in another country or a hard image. It's not like that. It, it was something different. This indignation um, changed um, the common sense of, of many Spaniards, of many people in my, in my country. For instance, what happened in 2011 is that uh, things that looked natural, like the labor conservative monopoly of two, for instance, these things didn't look natural anymore. They didn't look inevitable anymore. It was 35 years of the same thing, and suddenly this wasn't inevitable. This well, could change. We didn't know how, but it could change in the common sense of, of many people. So, the end of trust in traditional politics did not alter the balance of powers. It didn't produce a new, it didn't produce a new balance of uh, economic, political, and media forces, but it changed a certain frame of, of common sense. But from this uh, very specific social situation, uh, one cannot come out with a very strict set of policies that people agreed with one can't come out with a very homogeneous um, collective subject. People remained heterogeneous, things remained complex, but you know, common sense kind of changed. Uh, let's not forget that uh, a very critical situation does not actually and necessarily produce um, a progressive movement, a people's movement. In France and in other countries, or the UK, for instance, um, with UKIP, we are experiencing, experiencing sorry, how uh, the same social situation or very similar social situations can produce very different movements. So let's not think that because there was, uh, there were many demonstrations, uh, because we were able to rally mass numbers, um, now there is a progressive party, a new progressive party in Spain. Another situation. Uh, you know, could be possible right now. There could be a extreme wing, for instance, a right-wing party in, in, in Spain. So situations uh, do not produce automatically uh, people's movements. But that's important because sometimes some people think they do. Uh, well, so the challenge ahead when we first thought about Podemos, uh, that was two years ago actually, so six months ago we launched it, um, the, first, the challenge ahead uh, was to build up a social majority, to turn indignation into political change, but without mistaking two different realities. First reality, the squares, the squares and the social movements. Those movements were pointing at a crisis of capitalism, as a crisis of capitalism, and also of neoliberalism as um, the administration of, of uh, this stage uh, of capitalism. It was a crisis of representative democracy as a whole. They were pointing uh, at, at something like that. But other people, people at home, people watching TV, people listening to the radio, going to work or looking for a job, these people didn't go to the squares. These people weren't in the streets. And they were at home feeling sympathy. They felt sympathy for the indignados. They felt sympathy for the indignados. And they were pointing at a different crisis, a very specific crisis of the of the Spanish institutions, of the traditional parties, of the, the traditional Spanish politics. When we launched Podemos, we decided to stress this second reality. People at home, people watching TV, people who weren't part of any social movement, people who weren't uh, uh, doing politics already. We stressed uh, this second reality. I'll tell you why later. Um, also, in 2014, in January, we have to say, um, and, and it's important to, to let you know, uh, movements, social movements, were not thriving anymore. Actually, social movements in Spain in 2014 were going uh, backwards. So, the situation was very complicated. 
What have we learned uh, from this uh, experience, or what have I learned from from the experience of uh, creating, launching, and, and working along uh, with and in Podemos? Firstly, in Spain, in the middle of a severe, severe crisis, it was easy to observe um, many people with a very strange political identity, if you want to call it identity, um, basically more or less deprived of uh, political foundations. Um, what we understood is that right now, um, the traditional spaces where a political identity is forged, like the workplace, like communities, these places are not that relevant anymore in terms of uh, creating a political identity because of fragmentation, because of insecurity of work, because of gentrification, because of many social processes. Uh, these, these spaces are not as effective as they were and uh, given this situation we thought okay this, uh, this is very complex, this is very complex, these people uh, are not uh, traditional uh, subjects, are not traditional citizens as they, as, they, as they used to be 30, 40 years ago. Given this situation, and this might not be nice to say, you know, but given the situation, I think we were right about withdrawing from the idea, let's say, of the transition from the social to the political, let's say. The idea that it is necessary to accumulate a lot of grassroots force, a lot of social force, before standing in elections. What we found out is that it turned out to be better in order to build from below, to start from above, to start from the election, to start out of, out of the blue with a new party standing in European elections in May. We had nothing. We didn't have a euro, we didn't have anything. And we decided, okay, we have four months, let's stand in these elections, let's see what happens. What happens? What happened? Sorry, was 1.2 million votes and five MEPs. Yeah. We can. I can be more specific on this decision we, we made, but you know we decided to, to start from from both. We wanted to build. I, I insist on this. We wanted to build from below, but we started from both. This is a contradiction. I can live with them. <laughs> and I can, you know, explain uh, maybe better uh, later. Okay, second thing, I, I will, I will go faster. <laughs> second thing I've learned, or, or we've learned uh, from this experience. In Spain, there was um, something I might call a regime crisis. A, a regime crisis is not a state crisis, and it's not an economic crisis. Uh, we all know what an economic crisis is. Uh, a state crisis uh, something means that the state is not able to provide people with uh, services like public transport or, or pensions or benefits or, or whatever. In, in Spain, the state, um, even with the cuts, very severe, uh, even even with uh, a very uh, neoliberal government, the state worked. The state worked. Uh, there was public transport, there was, um, you know, so the state basically didn't um, fall apart. Uh, but the regime was actually um, in, a, in a huge crisis. What is a, a regime crisis? A regime crisis is a crisis of legitimacy. It's a crisis of the tales of the narratives that traditional parties put forward in order to explain situations. How does a party, a traditional party, explain, I don't know, the fact that they have to put forward cuts uh, in the NHS or, or education? Uh, the explanations, for instance. The, a narrative is, we have uh, lived beyond our means. This kind of thing we've been hearing a lot from traditional parties. So these narratives, and every narrative um, Coming from coming from the Labour and the Conservative Party, both of them, these narratives uh, uh, suddenly uh, fell into disrepute and, and founded themselves in a huge, in a huge crisis. 
It was a crisis of explanations, let's say, a crisis of words. These people, these politicians, were using words that people didn't understand anymore, using explanations, metaphors, images that people didn't understand anymore. People didn't trust them anymore because also because of the words they used and the way they explained things. And uh, in Spain, there, there had been a very successful tale, a very successful narrative um, since 1978 since the Spanish uh, democratic constitution. Uh, this narrative was, okay, we have to leave Franco behind without uh, asking too many questions, if possible. Um, we have to modernize the country, um, be part of the European Union, and uh, to find consensus. We need consensus. We, have, we had a civil war not, not so long ago. We need to forget about that. Let's go for consensus. Um, consensus is what really matters. And um, democracy could only mean one thing. This is the tale of the 78. We call it the, the tale of the 78. Uh, democracy could only mean one thing. Uh, the democracy that was already being uh, constructed. Democracy worked, let's say, like a cookie cutter. Everything, um, you know, everything to be considered had to fit the mood. If, if it didn't fit the mood, it was either irrelevant or anti-systemic. It wasn't democratic. And we thought, okay, uh, we have to challenge this narrative. We need to change the, 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 the history and the way history is being told. Uh, in order to do this, we, think, we thought, okay, we need to rethink and reactivate democracy. And because people were so fed up with uh, politicians telling them what was wrong and what was right, we said, okay, maybe it's not about the things you say and the set of policies you want to put forward and you advocate for. Um, it's may, it might be about not what you say, but about how you do things. Not the things you say, but how you organize. So not the what of politics, but the how of politics. And we call this uh, the ethics of politics, how you organize. And we, and we thought, okay, uh, people are demanding um, more transparency, more accountability, and, and, and things like that. Are these uh, things uh, part of the left-wing tradition? Not really. Not really. But who cares? Who cares? Transparency is okay. Accountability is okay. All those things matter. Let's go for that. Let's, let's stress these issues. And that's what we did to focus on how we do things and not on uh, the things we say, not the things we say. And it worked, because people realized that uh, things could be different, but not because other people, younger or whatever, uh, were telling uh, them different things. It was because they organized differently, because they did things differently. And this worked, really worked. People have valued that aspect very much. Third and last thing. <coughs> Who changes what? It's the it's the question. Um, we have uh, accepted <laughs> and realized that um, we have been able to build a new narrative according to which the diffuse. Um, counter-establishment uh, feeling in Spain, uh, the oligarchic management on, of the crisis and the kidnapping of democracy are part of the, of the same problem. That's what we have managed to do. Now people tend to link democracy to these problems and this wasn't uh, usual in, in Spain before, before Podemos. This is something we have managed to do but this is not enough. <coughs> Uh, the question is, who changes uh, what? Who is the subject of change? Um, we are certain that the left needs to understand that uh, this process of change in Spain belongs to no one. The fact is that we think, and, and I think we are right about that, um, we think that the left is not the subject of change. And I've been a, a left-wing person for a long time, and I've been an activist for a long time. And I tell you this, and, and it, it took me you know, some time to accept this, uh, that neither the left nor the activists change countries. It's the people. 
People who don't attend uh, very long assemblies, very long meetings, people who don't discuss very strange issues, who don't have any agreements, who don't have any ism at the end of... Uh, that's the people who change. Uh, and without them we are nothing. And uh, without them, without those people watching TV at home and looking for a job, uh, and those people, I'm sorry, might not be here, <laughs> including myself. Uh, uh, you know, uh, without them, as I said, we are nothing. And, and you know, it takes time to realize. That. <laughs> well, summarizing, uh, I'm basically done. What Podemos comes up with is a combination of democratic methodology and some uh, transversal uh, agreements, which I might summarize uh, as, as follows. Corruption, which is a big issue in Spain. Corruption. Uh, <laughs> corruption. Corruption is, uh, must, be understood, must be understood as a kidnapping of democracy. Yeah. If, corruption, if corruption is the system, is the system, because in Spain, if there was no corruption in Spain, the system wouldn't work, actually. If the corruption is the system, then democracy uh, does not exist. That's the first basic agreement. Second, austerity must also be defined and reconsidered in terms of democracy. If we can't choose the economic model we want to live with, then democracy does not exist either. Thirdly, sovereignty as well must be defined in terms of democracy. Those who rule, they do not stand in elections. And if this is right, then democracy is being kidnapped by savage powers. So, are not living under democratic conditions. <laughs> we want these basic agreements and many other things I will, I will tell you about if you want to, to know more. We want these basic agreements to strengthen a social majority able and ready to change the country now. So we want to win now. But at the same time we need to um, open new ways in order to change also, not the electoral balance of, of powers, but also the common sense that allows changes to remain and, and to be possible in the long term. Thank you.